together with my colleague Olaf, we are going to be presenting to you today about capacity in the GBIF network. Um, as we've seen, capacity could be capacity in GBIF could be seen as the vast volumes of data that are flowing around the network. But we know that for that to happen, there also needs to be uh, considerable capacity at the level of the participants. Um, we want to focus our presentation today on how we see the GBIF participants using GBIF as a framework or context for doing capacity development actions. And we want to focus on a few re recent examples of how this is going on and also about how at the Secretariat we are trying to support these kind of actions. Before we get on to the examples, I just wanted to say a few words about how we are viewing capacity. Um, we would like to start by just making the distinction between capacity enhancement as opposed to capacity building. Um, I think this is important because we've heard in the discussion yesterday that sorry, yep, um, that it places the, the distinction between capacity building and capacity enhancement places the emphasis on um, capacity enhancement building on existing capacities and on joint learning through partnerships. We also want to emphasize a more holistic view of capacity occurring on three levels. Um, and I would like to stress that we are looking at different mechanisms to develop capacity on these levels. So for example, training um, provides a good way of building capacity at the level of individuals, but those individuals also need to be supported by their organizational environment and then a broader enabling environment, including policies and everything. And, and GBIF has different mechanisms for trying to develop capacity on those levels. So at the level of the participant countries and organization in GBIF, uh, the activities are coordinated through teams that are called participant nodes. And when we look across the diversity of uh, participants, we can see that there is a very big diversity in how they have taken the approach of setting up these participant nodes. So um, this diversity also represents a wealth of experience. And so this year, we've been trying to work with nodes to enrich the content that is available about the country participants on gbif.org. Uh, we have these country pages that highlight the role of the participants. And we have now included on there more information describing the nodes. This includes information about the nodes' history, vision and mission, uh, structure, and so on. And also linking to the trends in data mobilization um, that we've seen in the video earlier. So when we look across the diversity of participant nodes, we can see that the services that they provide fall generally into four main categories. Um, for example, everything to do with supporting data mobilization. This spans from digitization through to the technical support for publishing the data. Then there are services to do with data management and curation, everything to try to improve the quality of the data that are being published and their fitness for use, supporting data analysis and use. This involves also included in this category, I should say, there is everything to do with making the data available in a format that um, it's most useful for the stakeholders on the national or thematic level. And then there is a strong role in coordinating the biodiversity related initiatives and through that making a connection to GBIF and the global level. Uh, this year we have uh, um, updated a guide on establishing an effective participant node that tries to summarize some generalities across the diversity in the network. And um, this is now out for public review amongst the nodes, and we hope to get to a final version of the document by the end of the year. Another way that GBIF is supporting capacity development actions is through providing co-funding for projects, such as mentoring projects. Um, I just want to share one example here. In, as we've seen, many participant nodes uh, need to provide national portals to um, allow access to the data to their stakeholders in a way that's uh, adapted to their needs. Um, in 2012, uh, Costa Rica expressed interest in working with the Atlas of Living Australia to uh, adapt their tooling to the Costa Rican context. This uh, was funded through GBIF, co-funded through GBIF as a mentoring project. Going beyond that, this collaboration has now broadened out into the network and we see several participants, uh, four more, joining together interested in 
trialing this tooling in their national context. GBIF has provided support to capacity enhancement through different mechanisms in the past. So we have had this mentoring program and we've also had support for regional training. Uh, this year we've tried to bring these things together in a more integrated approach. So we have uh, had a first trial at a new call for capacity enhancement support, which allows the participants to design projects that bring together different um, forms of capacity development action. So you can combine these things together into single projects, so involving both mentoring actions and regional training, advocacy and documentation. And this we think is important because these actions can target capacity development at different levels. In, uh, in 2014, five capacity enhancement projects were selected. Um, GBIF made available uh, co a co-funding of 40,000 euro from uh, GBIF core funds and GBIF participants levered another 70,000 euro for the, to enable these projects. <clears throat> what we can see is that these capacity enhancement projects really make use of these different elements that are available in the capacity enhancement program. There are also some new uh, things that are, that are being trialed such as a, a hackathon uh, around uh, national species checklists uh, in Europe, for example. And then uh, another observation that could be made is that many of these projects, they make links to regional priorities that are agreed upon by GBIF participant nodes in different regions. Um, GBIF makes use of uh, several governance uh, structures and one of these governance structures is called the GBIF Participant Nodes Committee. All the node managers coming from organizations or coming from countries are assembled together in that uh, committee. <clears throat> Some years ago, in 2008, uh, it was discussed that there was a different structure that, that was needed to enable more discussion at the regional level about shared, similar uh, challenges, similar needs for capacity and also similar or, or comparable uh, uh, working and how, how that kind of collaboration could come together. Um, GBIF has uh, since 2011 uh, adopted it, uh, this approach more formally and has put a uh, regional governance structure uh, around this that is covering six uh, regions altogether. Now these, these regions, they have been meeting for, for quite some time now. Some are meeting every year, other, others are uh, meeting every other year. And this approach is uh, starting to really bear fruit. It's starting to mature. And several of these regions are working on uh, regional uh, projects uh, where in which most uh, of the participant nodes present are actually working together uh, towards a common goal and that goal is very often the regional priorities or agendas also set by other initiatives. Now one of these examples is for for example in the uh, uh, Asian region where the GBIF participant nodes of Asia have uh, acknowledged that there is actually a lack of available biodiversity information within the region and uh, there's uh, of course, they are addressing this by mobilizing more uh, biodiversity data. But one of the things that they have uh, especially identified is the need to compare actually checklists on endemic species, on protected species between different uh, countries. So they have embarked on a project that, that is around that to know whether countries are actually talking about the same species and whether those species have similar protection uh, status. And this is a very important project, for example, if you think in, uh, in terms of global change. In Africa, the GWF African nodes have worked together on, uh, uh, on a strategy and a work plan. And from that, um, they have written a, a project that surrounds mobilizing policy-relevant biodiversity uh, data and they got funding for it from the JRS Foundation with a regional coordinator that is now based at Sambi. Um, 
what is nice about this project is that it's bringing uh, together, um, uh, it's making this toolkit for mobilizing policy relevant data and this is supposed to strengthen uh, also the research and uh, technology agenda of the African Union. So what we can see is that at the regional uh, level this actually provides the enabling environment for uh, a, a lot of activities that are going on. Um, there is room for, for joining up knowledge, uh, joining up capacities because different countries have different capabilities um, and together that is really forming a, a stronger knowledge base. And also what we can see is that uh, more and more projects are being developed that are not uh, that are coming from different funders, but they are contributing to these shared re regional priorities. And some of these regions also are getting uh, countries on board uh, in their work that are currently not in in GBIF. and and together. Uh, we believe that, that some regions are getting really concrete con uh, contributions that might strengthen several of the international science policy uh, initiatives that are out there. And Tim Hirsch will uh, uh, tell us in the next presentation what those uh, uh, initiatives are about. So when we look at all these examples that we have in our uh, network, then we can see that actually the GBIF network together with the Secretariat <coughs> is capable of addressing all of these different elements that we have in this capacity and enhancement program and concept. Whether it's on the individual level, the organizational level or the enabling environment. And uh, we can also see that GBIF is getting more and more recognition for this capacity development work that we are all doing. And key in this recognition is that uh, GBIF has the mechanisms to make sure, to secure, that capacities are, uh, um, how you say, implemented sustainably at the national uh, level beyond the project end. And it's it's with that realization that we are going out uh, to find and seek more uh, projects like, for example, the CEP2D with uh, our French uh, colleagues, uh, uh, Eric Schoene, <laughs> sitting over there, and uh, where we are also approaching the European Commission, the Development Cooperation Agency, and they recognize that this is a really good mechanism to, uh, to work with. So what we would like to, ha uh, to state here as the take home message is that this mechanism is out there. Uh, we have a really strong network, a network that is capable of absorbing funds and doing something really valuable with it for the long term. So we would encourage everybody uh, that has ideas for capacity announcement projects to step forward and to work with us to make a stronger network. Thank you very much.